بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين العاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد we continue going over the explanation of أصول السنة this great tremendous book that has been authored by the Imam of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. We have reached the point in the book where it's enumerated as point 38 and is found on page 30 of the translation where the Imam Rahmatullah Alayhi he says, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ And whoever abandons the prayer, then verily he has become a disbeliever. وَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْأَعْمَالِ شَيْءٍ تَرْكُهُ كُفْرٌ إِلَّا الصَّلَاةِ And there is nothing from the actions, or there is no action, that the abandonment of it is disbelief except the prayer. Naam, that the abandonment of it is disbelief except for the prayer. So the Imam is telling us that whoever leaves the prayer, then this one has verily qad kafar. Qad kafar. Which can be understood as they have disbelieved. Verily they have disbelieved. Naam, verily they have disbelieved. Or they are what? They have become kufar. Naam, they have become kufar. The Shaykh says, Man tarakaha fahuwa kafirun. Whoever leaves it off, then he is a kafir. Waqad ahalla Allahu qatlu. And Allah has made permissible his killing. Naam. The Shaykh says, The Alama, Fadil to Shaykh, Shaykh Rubiyah, bin Hadi al Madhali, Hudullah Ta'ala, he says with regards to the statement of Imam Ahmad, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ فَقَدْ كَفَرُ And whoever has left off the salat, then verily they have disbelieved or they have become kufar. He says, هُنَاكَ أَدِلَّ كَثِيرًا يَا إِخْوَ لِمَنْ يُكَفِّرُونَ تَارِكُ الصَّلَاةِ قَوِيَّ جِدًّا He said, you have proofs and evidences, O brothers, which point to the fact or that are utilized by those who say that the one who leaves off the prayer is a kafir. You have strong proofs and evidences which establish the disbelief for those who abandon their prayer. He says, قَوِيَّ جِدًّا Very strong proofs and very strong evidences. وَيُقَابِلُهُمْ مَنْ لَا يُكَفِّرُ تَارِكُ الصَّلَاةِ And on the opposite side, you have those ulama who they do not consider as a disbeliever those who abandon the prayer. وَلَهُمْ تَأْوِيلَاتِ لِهَذِهِ النُّصُوصِ And they have their interpretations of these particular texts. And inshaAllah ta'ala, the shaykh is going to get into this issue with some more detail because it is not an issue that is black and white. And it is an important issue for us to, to know and to understand بإذن الله ta'ala. The shaykh, he goes on and he says, وَمِنْ adilla." May يُكَفِّرُونَ And from the proofs for those who say that the one who abandons the prayer is a kafir. From the proofs that they utilize is the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah. The ayah in Surah At-Tawbah and it's verse 11. So that's verse 11 from Surah At-Tawbah. Naam. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ and if they repent, if they sincerely repent, and they pay the zakat, then they are your brothers in the religion. Then they are your brothers in the religion. Naam? Huh? Naam. Mother? Oh, Afwan. So if they repent, Barakallahu Naam. If they repent and establish the prayer and pay the zakat, then they are your brothers in the religion. Then you are they, then they are your brothers in the religion. Naam. The shahid here, 
is Allah Ta'ala's statement that if they establish the prayer and repent, then they are your brothers in the religion. Now, فَقَالَ الشَّيْخِ فَلَا تَحَصِّلُوا الْأَخُوَ إِلَّا بَعْدَ الدُّخُورِ فِي الْإِيمَانِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاءِ He says, so thus they will not have reached brotherhood or will not be something that is actualized for them until they had entered into faith, established the prayer, and paid the zakat. And paid the zakat. So therein there is a proof that what? That from the establishment of the prayer is something that is necessary for an individual to be considered a Muslim. Naam. So if it's something that is necessary for an individual to be considered a Muslim, then by default the leaving of it will render an individual not a Muslim. Naam. So this is the uh, point of reference that they're utilizing from this particular ayah. Allah Ta'ala he also says in Surah Tawbah in verse number 5 فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَخَلُّوا سَبِيلَهُمْ Allah Ta'ala he says but if they repent and they establish the prayer and they pay the zakah then uh, leave them or let them or يعني, let their way be free نعم then leave them or let their way be free. And that makes makes sense. Now, that if they pay or if they repent and establish the prayer and pay the zakat, then free them. Then let their way. Then yani leave them. Basically, leave them be. Leave them be. Now. The shahid here is what? Is that is essential that they repent, perform the salah, and pay zakat, give the charity. Then and only then, once that is established, then they are to be left alone. Then you leave them. Naam. The shaykh he says, فَلَا تُخَلِّ سَبِي لَهُمْ وَيَرْفَعْ عَنْهُمْ السَّيْفِ إِلَّا إِذَا آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُ الزَّكَاءِ He says, so thus you don't leave them alone and you do not sheathe your swords. You do not take your swords away from them and sheathe them except after they had believed in Allah, established the prayer and paid the zakat. And paid the zakat. The shaykh, he says, thus, حُجَجْ قَوِيَّ جِدًّا so they have strong proofs and evidences. What kathira? Uh, and they have a lot of proofs and evidences which point to the fact that the one who abandoned the prayer, then he is a kafir. Naam. Minha from them. Qawluhu. Surawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Fima rawahu wa tirmadhi. Wa ibn Majah. Wa nisa'i. Wa sahahahu al-albani. Rahimahumullahu ta'ala. It is from that which has been collected by a Tirmidhi. And it has been collected by Ibn Majah. And it has been collected by An Nisa'i. And it has been rendered or graded authentic also by Imam or by Al Albani. Now, so again, it was narrated by Imam Al Tirmidhi, Imam Ibn Majah. Imam al Nasai and graded as authentic by Imam al Albani. Naam. Tayyib. Naam. La, la, la. Fa al hadith, Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wa man taraka al salata fa qad kafar. Whoever has left off the prayer, then he has disbelieved. That whoever has abandoned the prayer, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Then verily, most definitely, they disbelieved. Now They have disbelieved. And therein, there is an emphasis. Because قَدْ مَعَ فِعْلِ الْمَاضِي When you have the قَدْ 
and you put it with a fi'il madi, you put it with a past tense verb, then you understand tawkid. This is a, an emphasis. This is an emphasis. Now, you feel it, yani tawkid is an emphasis. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Then verily they have disbelieved. This is strong. And also you have in a hadith that has been collected by Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majah wa Nisa'i وَكَذَلِكَ صَحَّهُ الْأَلْبَانِ This hadith has been collected by Imam at Tirmidhi. And Imam Ibn Majah. And Imam al Nisa'i. And it has also been rendered authentic by Imam al Albani. Naam, just like the first one we mentioned. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Bain al abd wal kufri aw shirk tarku salat. That between a slave and disbelief and shirk. Or, or shirk is the abandonment of the prayer. Is the abandonment of the prayer. That between a slave, disbelief, and shirk is the abandonment of the prayer. Is the abandonment of the prayer. Naam. So therein there is a clear indication that the one who abandons the prayer, then what? Then he is a kafir. Because what is between the abd and between kufr and shirk is the salah. So when the one leaves it, then what? Then there is nothing between him and kufr and shirk. Thus he is a kafir. This is what is understood. Right? So the affair of prayer, this is something that is tremendous. This is not something light. A salah is something that is tremendous. So we should be very guarding of our salawat on our prayers. We should be very uh, conscious of our prayers and make sure that we guard our prayers with Nilahi Ta'ala. And we shouldn't let anything get in get in the way of that. We shouldn't let anything become a hindrance between us and the establishment of our prayers. Naam. And when one looks about when one looks at this really and he's really concerned about his prayers, it would transform his whole mentality and, and it would have an effect upon his lifestyle as a whole. Right? Because for the one who's seriously concerned about his salawat, he's going to make sure that what? That he moves near to a masjid or to a musallam. Right? And as we know, situations vary. Not everyone is in, in the same situation. And we're speaking, and it's particularly for the men. Because from the establishment for the salah for the men is that they pray in jama'ah. Naam. So with this in mind, and understanding the reality and the seriousness of the salah and the like, Either one will move near to a masjid, right? Or if his situation does not allow him to move near to a masjid, then they will establish a musalla. A musalla. Not a masjid, but a musalla. Where they can pray their five prayers, daily prayers, they're in, in jama'ah, right? And of course, all of this is according to ability. Now, because say one, for example, he, he due to his. Uh, place of residence or due to his job situation the like, he lives in a place where there's no masjid, and it's not feasible for him to move near to the nearest masjid, but in any event there may be Muslims living in that particular location right, so it will behoove those individuals, those Muslims to what, to come together and to make at least a musallah so they can pray the five prayers therein, and for Jumu'ah, they close in and go to the nearest masjid, right so for Jumu'ah, they close in and go to the nearest masjid this is, you know, if the ability allows them to do so. If they don't have the ability to do that, then at least they will do what? They will get together and pray. Alhamdulillah, this is Florida. Now, the weather is pretty nice all year round. Okay, mind you now, I'm, I'm, I still have New Jersey skin. So what you call cold is, not, is barely chilly. <laughs> so the weather is pretty nice all year round. Khair. So it will be very feasible for them just to pray together. Whether it be in front of one of the brother's houses, right? In his in his driveway, whether it be in his backyard, whether it be in the nearest park, what have you. There's really no excuse why the the salah can't be established in Jama'ah. There's really no excuse why, especially when you have Muslims who are living near to one another. 
There have been Muslims in the, yani, who I've known who one opened up his basement as a Muslim. There was no Muslim in the area, couldn't no one afford anything. He's already paying rent for his house. So he said, hey, we can pray in my basement. Now, and the brothers established a lot in his basement. For Fajr and for Aisha. Of course, during the day he wasn't there. So no salat there at those times. But they did their best until they were able to do more. Now, this is just give the brothers something to think about, inshallah ta'ala, because it's not terribly difficult. We make it harder than what it really is. It's not terribly difficult. We tend to make it harder than what it really is. Now, but if you have one, he has a backyard, khalas. You have one, he has a, he has a, a stoop in front of his house, khalas. Huh? Or you can go to the to the park or to the nearest field or what have you. It's not tremendously difficult if we put forth just a little bit of effort, bithnilahi ta'ala. But this is something that we should think about and we should strive and establish doing because the salah is something that is tremendously important. It's tremendously important. Ma'am? And we have to instill this in our children. Because if our children see us being lackadaisical with regards to the establishment of the prayer, then this is the behavior we will instill inside them. So they will grow up thinking that it's okay to be like this when it comes to the prayer. So this is very important that we instill this behavior in our children. So that their earliest, remem- their earliest memories of their parents, right, is, is, is of them praying. Is of them praying. So of their earliest memories of their parents is of seeing their parents offer salah. Which will in turn, because children imitate their parents, which will in turn translate into what also some of their early memories being of them imitating their parents praying or praying along with their parents. Now, and this is how you want to establish and instill this, this behavior, this, this uh, excellent behavior inside of our children by giving them an excellent example. So this is something that we have to be mindful of. And the more we are mindful of this, the more you will see this transform. Back to... Uh, back to what we're talking about. The Shaykh he says, the salah wa hiya al Islam. It is the pillar of Islam. Kama sayati fi hadith Abdullah bin Shaqiq. He said, like it will come in the hadith of Abdullah bin Shaqiq, rahimahullah ta'ala, kama ashara ilayhi al Imam Ahmed. As Imam Ahmed, he alluded to this particular narration. Where, where the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala he said, وَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْأَعْمَى شَيْءٍ تَرْكُهُ كُفْرٌ إِلَّا الصَّلَاءِ And there's not from the actions anything that the abandonment of it is disbelief except the prayer. That there's no action that the abandonment of it itself is considered disbelief except the prayer. Except the prayer. فَأَحْمَدْ رَحِمُ اللَّهُ Ta'ala فِي هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ ذَهَبَ إلى تكفير تارك الصلاة. So Ahmed, meaning Imam Ahmed, رحمه الله تعالى, in this particular small booklet, he went with the opinion of declaring the one who abandons the prayer as being a kafir. وَتَجَبِ الْحَدِيثِ and he utilized as a proof and evidence the hadith. And also, وَحْتَجْ بِقَوْلْ عَبْدُاللَّهِ بِنْ شَقِيقِ And he also used as a proof the statement of Abdullah bin Shaqiq. Because in the statement of Abdullah bin Shaqiq, he gives to us the understanding of the Sahaba with regards to this issue. He gives to us the understanding of the Sahaba with regards to this issue. But the Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he alluded to this statement, now I'm without bringing the whole statement. Because this was a statement in his time, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that was well known. So you can allude to the statement and then everyone knew the, they knew the, the statement you were, you were, you were talking about. Uh, they knew the whole of the statement of which you were speaking of. Alakulihal, because we don't live in times like that, we're going to mention the whole statement as the Shaykh he mentioned the whole statement. Uh, so that we have the whole statement. Abdullah bin Shaqiq, Rahimullah Ta'ala, قال, he said, Kana ashabu Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس عندهم شيء من الأعمال تركه كفر إلا الصلاة. He said verily the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم there was there was nothing from actions or there was no abandonment of actions that equated to disbelief with them except for the abandonment of prayer. 
Okay? He said that verily, the companions of the Messenger of Allah, the companions of Muhammad wasallam, there was nothing with them that constituted, or there was, no, there was no action that the abandonment of it with them constituted disbelief, except for the abandonment of the prayer. وَيَذْكُرُ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنْ تَيْمِيَّةِ أَنَّ جَمَاهِيرِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ ذَهَبُوا إِلَى تَكْفِيرِ تَارِكُ الصَّلَاةِ He says, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah ta'ala, he mentioned that the vast majority of the people of knowledge from the Sahaba and other than them, they were of the opinion that the one who abandons the prayer is a kafir. That the vast majority of the ulama, you know, someone says, what's, what's, what's the, you know, what is the statement of the majority of the ulama? Naam. What is the statement of the majority of the ulama with regards to this issue? Then there's is that the one who abandons the prayer is a kafir. Most of the ulama, the majority of the ulama, they are of the opinion that those who abandon the prayer, then they are kufar. وَذَهَبَ جَمَاعًا مِنَ And there was a group from the imams بَلْ ذَهَبَ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ Shaykh Rabi'i he says rather many of the ulama they also have the opinion إِلَى تَكْفِيرٌ مَنْ تَرَكَ وَاحِدًا مِنْ مَبَانِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ They hold the opinion that the one who abandons one of the, any, any one of the pillars of Islam is a kafir that the one who abandons any pillar of Islam, any of the pillars of Islam, then he is a kafir. The shaykh, he says, يعني من ترك من ترك أو من ترك الصلاة كافر Meaning the one who leaves the prayer is a kafir. أو ترك أو ترك الزكاة كافر Or the one who leaves the zakat, he is a kafir. أو ترك الحج كافر Or the one who leaves the hajj, then he is a kafir. نعم, but he is a kafir. So some of the ulama went with whoever leaves off any of the five pillars of Islam, then he is a kafir. And the shaykh, he says, many of the imams and the ulama, this, they went with this opinion. Okay? So now, so now inshallah, we're going to slow down a little bit. Because the shaykh is going to get into the various opinions with regards to the ulama around this issue. Right? So we have one. Is that what? The vast majority of the ulama, they go with the fact that the one who abandons the prayer is a kafir. This is the majority of the ulama. They go with the opinion that most, uh, Afwan, that uh, most of the ulama go with the opinion that the one who leaves the prayer is a kafir. Okay? That's one. If you make bullet points, that would be your first bullet point. The second bullet point would be, and there are many imams. And many ulama who go with the opinion that whoever leaves off any of the pillars of Islam is a kafir. Any of the five pillars is a kafir. Right? The Shaykh says, Wali Imam Ahmad, Iddatul Aqwal fi takfir hadihi al mabani. Third point, and with Imam Ahmad, you have various statements with regards to declaring. An individual, a kafir, who leaves off these pillars. So from Imam Ahmed, you have various statements with regards to the takfir of the one who leaves off the pillars of Islam. But yeah, various statements. Walahu qawl. This will be the next bullet point, which should be our fourth. وَلَهُ قَوْلٌ And he has a statement, قَوْلٌ لَا يُكَفِّرُ إِلَّا تَارَكُ الصَّلَاءِ وَالزَّكَاءِ And you have from him a statement where he only considers to be a kafir, the one who leaves off prayer and charity and zakat. Nah, only the one who leaves off the... the uh, the salah and the zakat. Are you?
So let me know if you need me to repeat any of these with any later. Everyone, got it? Ain't now. Right. It's considered a kafir. That'll be that's the what the fourth the fourth one. Right? So the first one again that Jamhur Ulema, right? They went with the opinion that uh, the one who leaves the prayer is a kafir. Right? Okay. And then the second one is that many of the ulama they went with the takfir of what? No, no. Any pillar. Now. That whoever leaves off one pillar, right? Then they are a kafir. But yeah. Then the third will be that what we have uh, various opinions from Imam Ahmed with regards to the takfir of the one who leaves off the pillars of Islam. Tayyip? And then the next one is that he only made the takfir on the, on those who left off what? The zakah and the The zakah and the salah. Are you? Khair inshallah. So now the, the fifth the fifth point, fifth bullet point. Rubi. Walahu qawl bi takfir tarik al-salat. Is that we have from him a statement of the takfir of the, of the one who abandons the prayer. For Imam Ahmed. Now. The takfir of the one who abandons the prayer. Alright? And, 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 and inshallah ta'ala, the shaykh is going to bring the details and you'll understand why uh, in a bit. But also the sixth bullet point is that there's statements from Imam Ahmed, right? Bi'adam takfir barak salah you also have statements from Imam Ahmed that point to the fact that the one who abandons the prayer is not a kafir. Is not a kafir. Okay? So this is why I want you to write them all down. So, inshallah ta'ala, you will have, will have some understanding on how can it be some statements that they're kufar and some statements that they're not kufar. Because it's with details. It's with details. Inshallah ta'ala. But yeah. No, inshallah, we're going to get into that. Right now, we're going to get into that, inshallah. Ta'ala. But yep. Yeah. The Shaykh, he says, he says, لِأَنَّ الْأُمُورِ شَائِكَ وَالْأُمُورِ خَطِيرَ He said, because this is an issue, you see all these various statements, right? He said, because this is an issue that is complicated and very serious. This is an issue that is complicated and is very serious, right? وَأَدِلَّ مِنْ جَانِبَيْنِ قَوِيَّ and reality is that the proofs and evidences on both sides are strong. The proofs and evidences on both sides are strong. Right? He says, فَيُحَسِّلُ لِلْإِنسَانِ فِيهِ شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْإِخْتِلَافِ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْإِخْتِلَافِ النَّظَرِ إِلَى الْآخِرِ He says, so thus for an individual you will find uh, that they that, that that they will come about among, uh, yeah, they, that 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 they will come about uh, for him uh, these various different statements and these and these uh, different opinions uh, uh, to the end of that right that they'll be there because due to all the various statements and the various opinions 
uh, in, uh, in various views, in the varying of views, and so on and so forth, uh, related to this particular uh, particular topic, particular topic. So a person in his studies and his readings, he will find many statements about this topic. Now, many statements about this topic. Well, as Shafi'i, it's another point, another bullet point. As Shafi'i, right? Wa Malik, Imam Malik, Tayyib, Wa Abu Hanifa, Wa Imam Abu Hanifa, okay? So that's Imam Shafi'i, Tayyib, Imam Malik, Tayyib, and Imam Abu Hanifa. طيب عندهم with them ليس بكافر with them he's not a kafir so with them they say the one who leaves the prayer is not a kafir right but now here comes a detail وقبل ذلك هم ها but before this they were under agreement أن من تركها Juhudan Fahuwa Kafir. So it's important to understand that they have a statement that the one who leaves the prayer is not a Kafir, right? But you have to understand that also they agree. They, they agree. There is there is Ijma' that the one who leaves it. Juhudan intentionally. Fighting and warring against it, it's obligation, saying that it's not obligated. I don't have to pray. And so on and so forth, meaning I don't pray because I don't have to pray and the like. Then they agree, as all of the ulama agree, then that person is a kafir. Okay? So when we're talking about the issue of the differing of opinions of whether or not the one who starts praying is a kafir or not, is not with regards to the one who uh, obstinately starts praying, saying he doesn't have to pray, is not from Islam. Everybody agrees that person is a kafir. Where the disagreement comes in is with regards to whether a person starts praying to kafsulan wa tahawunan. If he stops praying out of laziness, he knows he should pray, but out of laziness and weakness of character and the like, he don't pray. Right? But he knows he should pray. See, now this is where the difference of opinion comes in. This is just an opinion. This is when they said that Imam Shafi'i, wa Imam Malik, wa Abu, Imam Abu Hanifa, they said he's not a kafir, meaning the one who doesn't pray out of laziness. The one who doesn't pray out of, uh, you know, being uh, neglectful and lazy. And likewise, those akwa from the ulama, like those akwa from Imam Ahmed, where he said that the one who doesn't pray, then he's, 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 he's not a kafir, meaning what? Out of the one who doesn't pray out of laziness, then he's not a kafir necessarily. Inshallah, tell at the end, well, I'll, I'll bring a, a uh, what do you call it, a khulasa, a summary. Inshallah, tell. I'll bring a summary at the end. But, I, but inshallah, I want you to see how this is an issue that is very detailed. It's not black and white. It's not something that's easy. But it's an issue that is very uh, detailed. It's very detailed. But yeah. Then the shaykh he says, "Well, Shafi, well, Ahmed." Uh, so then you have Imam Shafi'i and you have Imam Ahmed has been on them the statement with regards to this, the individual that he's a kafir, right? So you have a statement from Shafi'i and Imam Ahmed that said that the one who does who leaves the salat then he's a kafir, right? Now of course we can understand this is what the one who doesn't pray, juhudan. He has a prayer and he's, he's obstinately rebelling against the obligation of the salah. Tayyip? Tayyip. And then you have the statement from Imam Malik. The Adam al Where he doesn't consider them to be kufar. Right? And this is because they only consider to be kufar those who leave off the prayer 
warring against it. Jehudan. Naam. They only see those lead the, the, of the prayer as being any uh absently not not praying and leave and uh, fighting against his obligation. Tayyib. Wa amma wa huwa ya'tarif bi wujubiha. Meaning that the one who doesn't pray for Imam Ahmed and Imam Mali, Adam Adam uh 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 for the one who doesn't pray, but he knows, he acknowledges his obligation. And this is because why? All the ulama agree that if they don't acknowledge the obligation, then they kufar. All the ulama agree to that. If they don't acknowledge the obligation, then they kufar. So the Shaykh he says, well, This is what they're differing on. Because those who say no, the one who doesn't pray is a kafir, is the one who doesn't pray out of laziness, and the one who doesn't pray saying it's not wajib. Both of them are kufar. Right? The others from the ulama, they say yes, the one who doesn't pray fighting against his obligation, then yes, he's a kafir. But the one for laziness, no. He's not a kafir. No. Khair. And then you have from amongst the ulama, this will be another point, those who see the legitimacy in his killing, in executing him. Tayyip. Meaning that he should be he should be encouraged to make tawbah. Right? The Shaykh brings an example. He says, "Ida tarka salat al dhuhr, yuqar Allahu salli, illa an yadkhul al waqt al asr, ha, fayarfud al salat, fayaktul haddan." He said, "For example, if if, if dhuhr comes in, then it be said to a person, pray, and and you keep upon him like that, but he don't pray up until the time the asr come in. He still ain't pray, and he refused to pray. Then he could be executed." Uh, because of the Islamic punishment, then he can be executed because of the Islamic punishment. Well, just know for refusing to pray for a period, he said, "I'm praying for." Then Asa come in, he said, "I still ain't praying for." I ain't praying for, right? Then for that one, they said they can kill him, uh, hidden, right? Establishing the, the punishment against him, hidden, but he's a Muslim. That's his punishment, but he's a Muslim. So it's important, right? And then you have from the ulama those who agree with his killing, those who say yes, execute him, right? But this one is not had done. But they say you execute him, and he is a kafir. Right? So this one is murtad. <coughs> so they say, kill him, not hadden, but what? Because he is a murtad. Because he would have left, he left off the Islam. That makes sense? But yeah. What's that? Some of them, but you have from Ahl Sunnah as well. Those who say, "No, kill him," and if he, if in other words, they say, if he has to be killed because he don't want to pray, then they see that as being jahudan. They're saying, if you have to kill him because of not praying, then with them they say, then that his, that's his, uh, that's him obstinately not praying, refusing, you know, uh, refusing to pray and the like. So because of his fighting against it and being obstinate, then yes, you kill him and he's a kafir. Meaning, if he has to be executed, that's that's always jahudan. But there ain't that much laziness in the world. No. So this is how this is why some of them say. Other than them say, say no, he says, you know, he can still be lazy and he prefers the sword. So he says, so then you kill him, but he's still a Muslim. Nah. But yeah. And then you have from Muslim Ulema those who don't see that you can kill them. From them was Abu Hanifa. <clears throat> right? Abu Hanifa, he didn't see that you can kill him. He didn't agree with that 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 that, that you can kill him, but rather he said that he should be imprisoned. 
and he should be encouraged to re- to to to, uh, to repent, and he should also be punished. There should be some type of punishment for him, right? And of course, that that punishment would be to the discretion of the judge. So he should be imprisoned, he should be urged to pray, and he should be punished. And you should keep him locked up until he prays, حَتَّى يُصَلِّي أَوْ يَمُوت Until he prays or dies. You keep him in there until either he prays or he dies, whichever one comes first. So basically, you give him a life sentence almost. If you don't pray. Either you got life or you pray. You see? So in any event, you will see that what? This is a serious affair. This is something that is serious. Now, it's something that is serious. Now, if you look at all these bullet points we have here, we have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to my count. Around there, right? Something like that. Are you? The khulasa, the summary, how we understand these various opinions and so on and so forth, right? And how the situation, um, we have to understand first that the situation is not black and white. Sheikh Saleh Abd Aziz Al Sheikh, Hafidullah Ta'ala, brought a beautiful statement which makes it very clear how we can understand this issue in light of all the different opinions and we understand where everyone's coming from, right? Because really there's no contradiction. There really is no contradiction. Play it. The Shaykh, he says, it's clear that the abandonment of the prayer is disbelief. That's clear. No one argues with that. The abandonment of the prayer is kufr. Right? And then he brings an example on how if a person just merely falls into kufr, merely abandons the prayer, he doesn't become a kafir just by that alone. But to leave off the prayer within itself, yes, it's disbelief. But just because he left off the prayer doesn't mean necessarily he's become a kafir. And then he brings an example. He said, for example, the one who he prays to something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what? This is shirk, right? But the one who prays to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes that shirk is he a kafir just like that think about it is he a kafir just like that the one that prays is something else this is shirk right and shirk is kufr Right? Shirk makes a Muslim a kafir. But if, but if a Muslim prays to a grave, for example, is he a kafir automatically because he prays to a grave? Of course the answer is no. Because if that was the case, then most of the Muslims in the world right now would be kufar. Right? So we understand that a person, they can, they can fall into shirk. But just because they fell into it are not necessarily a kafir merely by the merely by the uh, by the act of committing that particular act of shirk. Why? Because they might be ignorant. So if they're ignorant, right? Then they're not going to become a kafir just because they just because they make istighatha to a wali that's dead in the grave, right? They may be making blind following. They just doing it because that's what they, they saw their people doing. They don't know, or they may be doing it because someone gave them a false interpretation. Telling them that really it's okay and that, and, and, and that it doesn't contradict Tawheed. Somebody lied to them, gave them false interpretation. Right? So they're not going to become a kafir until when? Until after the proofs and evidence is established against them to show them the truth and reality of what they're doing. Then after that, if they remain, after they understand the hujjah, then if they remain upon that, then they become kufar. Right? That makes sense. We all agree, right? Sheikh Saleh al-Sheikh, he said the same thing with prayer. Same thing with the prayer. A person just stopped praying like that, then yes, he fell in the kufr, no doubt. Because not to pray is kufr. He said, but he won't become a kafir until you remove these hindrances. 
You remove these things that are preventing you from making him a kafir. Meaning that what? He might have done it because he's ignorant. He don't know. Right? He may be doing it uh, because he's just blind following. He sees his father don't pray. His father claims Islam all day long. But he never, he never seen his pops praying. So he thinks, oh, it's okay to be a Muslim and not pray. That's fine. Right? Or because someone told him, you don't really got to pray. You don't really have to pray. It's good to, but you only have to. Right? So as long as there may be some, some, some room for it for to be an excuse, he's a Muslim. The proofs and evidence have to be established against him. Once the proofs and evidence are established against him, and all the excuses are removed, then at that point, if he remains consistent upon not praying and saying, well, I'm still not going to pray, okay, then he becomes a kafir. Now, and the shaykh, he says, this is the, the strongest opinion when you look at this particular issue. That yes, it's kufr, like every other thing else from kufr, but the mere falling into that particular thing of kufr will make you a kafir. And so after all the excuses are removed and the proofs and evidences are established. Now, Another point to, men- to, to mention is that what? Is that by mentioning the general rule of something, this does not translate to the specific individual. This is a principle. That just because there's a general rule for something, that is, is not applicable to the individual. Because individual cases are handled case by case. On the merits of their particular case in that situation, right? So, so the ulama, this is this is for the ulama. They'll talk about specific individuals, okay? So we can say, for example, the one who makes shirk is a mushrik, is a kafir. The one who makes shirk is a polytheist, okay? The one who who, who yani does acts of kufr and the like, or the one who leaves a salah, he's a kafir. We can say that in general, right? But the specific person who doesn't pray. Or the specific person who's falling into something from shirk, like like the people who worship in graves and and and, and, the, and the dead saints and so on and so forth, we cannot make takfir on a specific person. The general rule and making t- and the application of that rule on a specific person are two different things. Okay, so we can say if someone came and say, the person who don't pray, what is he? The person who don't pray is a kafir. Okay, what about this guy right here in the corner? He don't pray. What is he? But we're not going to say he's a kafir. He's a Muslim. That person say, well, which one is it? I thought he is a kafir. No. The general rule is a general rule. But the application of that rule to a particular person is something totally different. Why? Because now we have to make sure that there are no excuses there. Maybe there's some doubt. We have to remove all the excuses first. We have to establish the hujah, explain. The reality of the situation. Then it has to be made sure, has to be known that he understands the explanation. Not just, may I told him every ayah, every hadith. La, that he understood what you were talking about. He understood the point of reference in the ayah, in the hadith, so on and so forth. He understood. And then after understanding and knowingly, huh, and knowing, then if he goes against it, then that's something different. Right? But who from amongst us could establish such proofs and evidences on the individual? None from amongst us. We can advise them with the proofs and evidences, because that's how we advise. Ain't no advice without no proof and evidence. Right? You want to advise, you want to give some proofs and evidences, inshallah. But yeah, you want to give proofs and evidences. But as far as any, I don't know, me, I, I don't feel comfortable. Right? To say, no, no, I know he knows he is. No. 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 That's for the ulama. That's for the ulama. That's not for us. That's for the ulama. That's for the ulama. That is for the ulama. It's not for us. Like we said before, it's a door that's closed, and the ulama are the only ones who have the keys. It's not for us. That's for the ulama. We just give advice, teach a general rule. But specific individuals, then no. The case is it's, it's for the ulama to handle the case. It's not for us. Nah, it's not for us. But here, so these are important things to know. When we come to issues like this, important things to know that the general rule is something, but the application of that rule on a particular and specific individual is something totally different. And as and as and as Ahl Sunnah, we don't run around making tech for young people. Period. We don't make tech for young people, right? Except that what that the ulama may tech for that person. Then khalas. Then we say what the ulama say. Lah, but you know, ulama say fulan's kafir. Then it's okay. 
Fulan's kafir. Or let's say Fulan's kafir. You see? You hide behind your thiqats. You hide behind the trustworthy ones. But yeah, so this is important to understand bi idnillahi ta'ala. Ala kulli hal. Aktafi bihala al-qadar. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.